Okay, for the next integration, we're actually going to revisit deriving the chain rule. Okay, so deriving this using the chain rule, can you remember what happens? Sorry? Expand. No, we don't expand. We don't want to expand this four times. That, that would be a lot of work. There's a quicker way to do this. The normal deriving of a chain rule. Normal deriving of a chain rule. So, what's the procedure, Swift? You derive the outside of it. Multiply by the, the derivative, derivative of the, of the inside. inside. That's right. So we're deriving the outside, so we're going to bring that 4 down. And what happens to the power? It goes down. goes to 3, goes to three right? We drop the power. Now we've derived the outside. Some people tend to forget we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the inside there is 5. Okay. What happens to the 5? They cancel. Right? So we're left with 4 times 5x minus 2 to the power of 3. Okay, everyone happy with that? All right. If there was a constant here, it would, it would cancel. We would lose that constant because the derivative of a constant becomes 0. Okay. So, integrating this should take us back to this. And it's the chain rule, but in reverse. Okay. So if we're going to integrate 4 times 5x minus 2 to the power of 3 dx, first thing is we're going to raise the power, divide by the power. And instead of multiplying the inside, we're going to divide the inside. So times by, instead of times by 5, we're going to times by 1 fifth. That's the same as dividing by 5, right? Yep. Okay, let's see what happens. So these fours cancel, and we're left with 1 fifth times 5x minus 2 to the power of 4 at the C. Is that the answer, sir? Is that the answer? Correct. Yes, it is. Just go back. It's, yeah, it's literally bad. Oh, it's just, oh.